We are back at the Garden of English, and we're exploring how to produce strong commentary for arguments every single time. I'm Tim Freitas, and I wanted to give a shout out to Mrs. Kessler's Louisville Leopards. Keep working hard as test time approaches. You're in great hands as you venture to slay that beast that is your AP exam. Today, we're going to continue writing a body paragraph based on the warning labels prompt, which you're about to see on the screen. And we're producing the first body paragraph that followed our original thesis, which you're also about to see. Over the past Past few videos, I've shown you how to break down argument prompts, write thesis statements, write topic sentences, and integrate evidence. If you haven't watched all of those videos before this one, you're going to want to because doing so will allow this video to make way more sense. You can access those videos in the description right below this video. Anyway, as we get into commentary, let me remind you what the topic sentence and evidence look like for the paragraph that we're writing. Here's the topic sentence. Just about anyone can admit that recent controversies surrounding the holiday marketing practices of private and public institutions highlight the incredibly temperamental nature of the human psyche, making it quite hard to entirely monitor the troublesome content that's out there. And here's the description of the evidence I'm including. For example, a few years ago, in order to signify their transition to the winter holiday season, Starbucks decided to replace their ornamental Christmas cups with ones that were merely colored red. In response to this change, many individuals protested it by calling it the newest manifestation of the war on Christmas. Of course, this figurative conflict was magnified since in about 2010, around the same season, there had been consistent reports of schools and municipalities relabeling their Christmas concerts, pageants, and decorations as holiday events and adornments. Also important to note here is that since the early 21st century, the public has been encouraged by the media to greet others with happy holidays instead of the more traditional Merry Christmas. Now that we have all of this, I'm going to give you some general tips for commentary. I'm also going to provide you with some commentary stems that will help you produce detailed commentary every single time. These can be quite helpful because if you can produce commentary consistently, you'll earn a three or a four in row B of your rubric, which is what you're working for every single time. Now, before I can provide you with commentary tips, I have to clarify what commentary is. Commentary is where you explain how your evidence justifies your claim, and that could be the claim in your topic sentence, or the claim in your thesis, or both. When I'm at the reading, or teaching my own students for that matter, what I see most often is students not providing commentary because they think that their evidence speaks for itself. Honestly, students write their commentary as if it's just obvious for how the evidence supports what their argument is. Unfortunately, it's often not obvious. And instead of providing commentary, students just say vacuous things, like this evidence proves my argument, or this evidence shows my argument is true. Or many students even write, so obviously this supports how my argument is true. What's so obvious about it? Well, the truth is, folks, that your evidence doesn't innately or obviously prove your claim. So you have to articulate the connection. And if the examples that I just gave of the this shows or this proves or the this obviously supports sounds like something that you do pretty often, know that there's something quick and easy that you can do to begin developing better commentary right away. And that is, at the end of any sentence that you ever say, this evidence proves the argument, just put the word because. The number one thing that any student can do to better his or her commentary is to make sure to add the word because into the first sentence that follows the evidence that shows up in the paragraph. Just taking this step has the potential to raise a score from a 2 to a 3 in that row B, and it can even help drive you towards scoring a 4 in row B. Now, what I want to do is I want to give you my quick tips to help you develop your commentary better. Then, we're going to actually check them out in action in relation to the Starbucks paragraph. Tip one, I already kind of mentioned this. Make sure that you have the word because show up in the first sentence that comes after you put your evidence in the paragraph. This will force you to articulate your reasoning. Tip two, you need to make sure that your commentary is at least three sentences long for each example that you include in your body paragraph. In fact, I often tell my students that their commentary needs to be the same amount of lines that their evidence is. So if their evidence takes up four lines on the paper, their commentary has to match that or be longer. Tip three, make sure to refer back to both your overarching argument and your example when you provide commentary in the body paragraph. If you're referring back to parts of your evidence and your argument, you are most likely trying to explain how the evidence and the argument relate. Since this is exactly what commentary is, you'll be providing commentary correctly. If you don't see your evidence mentioned in your commentary, or if you don't see any language that refers to your argument in your commentary, you're probably doing it wrong. Tip four, focus on including cause and effect language and focus on your verb use. Picking powerful verbs shows you're making accurate judgments, and cause and effect language will force you to explain connections. 
So your commentary should be loaded with words and phrases like because, consequently, since, therefore, thus, due to the fact that, and furthermore. And tip five, if you need some help with all of this, use my three sentences of commentary stems that I'm going to model for you here in this video. I have commentary stems that will work every time in an argument paragraph. They also work for synthesis too. And I know this because I've tried it with my students for years and their work hardly ever disappoints once they've practiced with these stems. It just so happens these stems force students to adhere to all of the tips that I just gave you in tips one through four. In the description below this video, there's a doc where you can access all of these stems and examples that I'm gonna go through while I finish the video. And that description is conveniently right near where you can find the like button and the subscribe button and the super thanks button and the channel membership buttons. Any of those buttons and your clicking of them helps us out here at the Garden of English. If I'm helping you, maybe you'll consider helping me. Anyway, let's take a peek at my stems for commentary. They're right here. If you were to really look at those stems, you'll notice that the first sentence of those commentary stems requires you to add both the claim of the topic sentence and the word because. Sentence two requires you to consider a consequence of your consideration in sentence one. And, I still consequences. and sentence three requires you to reach an overarching conclusion or extend your reasoning, but it also requires you to include the phrase due to the fact that which will prompt you to articulate your reasoning all the more. When you try to put your reasoning into words, which is what commentary is, you're trying to explain what assumptions you've made about the evidence that have moved you to make the conclusions that you've come to. All of these sentences work to help you recognize and articulate the assumptions, connotations, and stereotypes that you've worked through in your own mind so that your reader can know exactly how you were thinking as you process the relationship between your evidence and your claims. So let's see how this works with the commentary for my Starbucks example that needs to prove that humans are easily offended by almost anything and that it would be nonsensical to think that everything that's potentially offensive can be labeled. Here's what commentary sentence one would look like if added into the paragraph. This evidence confirms the easily offended nature of human beings because many took something as simple as the coloring of a cup and turned it into a figurative war on an ideology, which technically is impossible. Notice that I refer back to the evidence with the words, this evidence. I connect it to the argument from the topic sentence by mentioning the easily offended nature of human beings. I include the word because, and I begin to explain the assumptions that tie my evidence to my argument. I assume that the coloring of a cup is a simple thing. I connect this simple thing with being blown out of proportion by connecting it to a figurative war. And I throw in some style by correctly using some parentheses. Okay, let's look at what sentence two of commentary would look like as I'm still trying to articulate my argument. Consequently, since the change to the red cup still showcased actual Christmas colors, especially when combined with the green Starbucks logo, most individuals who knew just about any element of the Christmas tradition should have been able to clearly see that the company wasn't necessarily neglecting Christmas at all. Notice how I start the phrase with consequently since. This will force me to articulate some assumptions I have about the evidence. In this case, I connect the red cup to what's assumed to be Christmas colors. And I project that most people should have known these colors represent the Christmas tradition even if there isn't a Christmas image itself on the cup. Duh. Okay, now to commentary sentence number three. Furthermore, even if the cup were made less ornamental to be more inclusive, much like the language that municipalities and schools have begun to embrace, this is ironically polarizing due to the fact that it further highlights the fickle nature of humanity. Notice that rather than use the therefore or the thus, I decided to pick the word furthermore. This is because I wanted to extend the argument to the idea of inclusivity, and I wanted to refer back to the evidence of municipalities and schools all things that I hadn't touched upon yet, but were still in my topic sentence and my evidence. You'll notice that I included due to the fact that, and I connect my reasoning to further highlighting my main argument, the fickle nature of humanity. Now, I did personally choose to add a fourth sentence of commentary, and I want you to check it out. Thus, the silliness of this controversy further promotes the point that trying to anticipate, let alone label, what may offend others is quite a murky science because offense can be quite an unreasonable free-for-all for any individual. Now, multiply the opportunity for individual offense by seven billion individuals that make up the global population, and pandering to each person's qualms as to not upset another person becomes irrationally impossible. You'll notice that even though I don't have a stem for a fourth sentence of commentary, I did begin it with an unused word from my final sentence stem. I began with the word thus. This will force me to articulate a logical conclusion based on all that I've said before. 
I also included the other argument from my topic sentence that it will be impossible to label what offends everybody. I put the word because in this sentence and I explained the assumptions that labeling everything that could offend 7 billion people individually would be irrational. If you want to extend your commentary past those three sentences, you can do just what I did. You just need to make sure that you continue to use those strong commentary words like because, since, consequently, thus, and so forth. And really, at the end of the day, folks, providing commentary is doing exactly what I just showed you. Now, you can find a sheet linked in the description right down below that will give you all the templates and examples that you see in this video, and you can practice it for yourself. Now, with strong commentary, you are well on your way to earning a five on your AP Lang exam, but you haven't done it yet. You need to keep working hard, and I highly recommend that you consider practicing some more with my comprehensive exam review guide that offers you 180 practice multiple choice questions, two practice exams, exclusive videos, and note guides that go with all of those videos and my YouTube videos as well. You can access this review guide right in the description. You can even sign up for free and get all of Unit 1. And after you pick up that review guide, then you're going to need to go hang out with my friend Crystal the Liberty as she explains how you should add personal examples into your arguments. She does so in this video right here. Focus on... on ugh. Alright, that's like the first mess up today. I'm okay with that. How do I mess that up? Train. We get a train. And moved you to the conclusion, uh, the uh, no, that one, no, didn't, no. That labeling everything that could affect, oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, 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 no. I'm not buzzing.